All right, hi everyone, Mike Conti, Jason Longshore, joined by Darlington Nagby of Atlanta United. Well, Darlington uh, 4-0 mm -hmm. in Houston is probably not the way that I'm sure you envisioned getting mm -hmm. started with Atlanta United mm -hmm. nor your teammates on the season. Looking back on it, what do you think were some of the positives from mm -hmm. that match, if there were any, mm -hmm. and what do you think were some of the things you need to work on? Uh, I would say the only positive, you know, it's uh, it was the first game and it's done and over with. We get we get to learn from it, and uh, the negatives, I think, it was just individual mistakes that we, that we made uh, as as uh, as players, you know. But uh, like I said, it happened, and now we can look forward to the next game. But uh, there are things that we can correct moving forward, which was the go only good thing, I think. MLS, I, I think, it kind of proves in a way mm -hmm. that everyone is good in MLS. Mm -hmm. I mean, there really are no breaks in this schedule, yeah. right? Definitely. Uh, no matter who you are, how much talent you have, you know every game is a battle. Every team is going to go in there and, uh, and try to work hard and win the game. So no matter if you're top of the table or at the bottom of the table, every game is a hard game. What were some of the talking points coming out of that that you guys have been focusing in on training this week? Uh, it's just been more about ourselves, just eliminating uh, individual uh, mistakes that we made. Because uh, uh, every mistake we made, we got punished for them. So uh, eliminate those uh, individual mistakes, those little mistakes that can cost us. So you've been on an MLS Cup winning team in mm -hmm. Portland. How do you think this team is right now and coming together? Oh, I think it's good. Obviously, uh, we added some new pieces to the team, myself included. But uh, so far, I think the chemistry has been good with the guys. Uh, everyone's getting to know each other, and that's what preseason is for. You know, it's the beginning of the season, and not just uh, with soccer. You know, but you see it with, with other sports teams. You know, when you have new pieces and new important pieces, uh, it takes a little bit to gel. But I'm confident in the group. How do you like Tata? Mm -hmm. uh, he's been great. You know, uh, he's uh, the way he sees the game is very different, and uh, I I enjoy it. You know, he wants us to keep the ball, wants us to attack and press. He wants to, to dominate the game, every part of the game. So uh, the first game, we didn't do that, but uh, looking forward to the next couple of games. The reason why I ask is he's kind of a legendary figure yeah. in international football. So what were your perceptions of Tata? Mm -hmm. Maybe when you were playing with Portland, playing mm -hmm. with the men's national team, mm -hmm. what did you know about him? Mm -hmm. And what was your first interaction like mm -hmm. with him? Uh, first interaction was good. He just uh, introduced himself and welcomed uh, all the new guys to the team. And then uh, we got right into it. And uh, we started dealing with tactics, which I knew uh, – he would be big on, obviously, with the teams he's coached in the past and uh, little movements and where he wants guys to be in the attack and defensively, which uh, we've still been working on today. So uh, I think he's lived up to everything that, that I thought he was. Having played for Caleb Porter for so long, how different is this setup in getting ready for a season? Uh, I would say for me personally, you know, I've, uh, I had Caleb when, when I was 17, so up until now. So uh, it's someone that I knew personally and just uh, – how he wanted the team to play every every position, you know. So just for me personally, it's just been different getting used to uh, what Tata wants, what the coaching staff wants, what my new teammates want. But uh, I think it's been going well. How surprised were you that Caleb walked away last year? Uh, I think everyone was. Everyone was surprised, you know. Had a, what was it, six years, I think he was there, five, you know, successful season. So uh, that's part of the game, you know. Sometimes uh, you need to step away from things and just uh, reevaluate everything that's going on and uh, hopefully he gets back into it soon. What do you think some of the biggest differences are between maybe the culture they mm -hmm. had in Portland? Mm -hmm. And I'm not just talking about fan yeah. culture. I'm talking about with the team, mm -hmm. the building, everything. What do you think were some of the biggest differences between what you had in Portland and what you have here now in Atlanta? Uh, biggest differences. I mean, both teams like to play. Both teams like to dominate the game. And uh, that's one thing you can see from both, from both coaches. So uh, – I'd say just the personnel. You have different players. You know, we had talent there. We have talent here as well. But I would say here we have uh, maybe uh, more guys that are younger. So at the same time, uh, guys are still learning here and, uh, and getting better as opposed to Portland. We had more, uh, more veterans, I would say. At what point in the last couple months did it mm -hmm. become clear to you that it was going to be possible for you mm -hmm. to play here with Atlanta United? Mm -hmm. And how did you feel about that when that opportunity was presented to you? Uh, I'd say it was probably like a couple of weeks that I found out. It was going to be possible, you know, and uh, especially after Caleb, after Caleb left, it was a, uh, it was more possible not just for me, you know, but he's obviously someone that I respect a lot as a coach and person. So, having been in Portland that long and under Caleb, you know, once he made that decision, I thought it was uh, good for me, not just uh, soccer wise, but uh, you know, just as a as a family man, just to see new things. And I'm from Ohio, so I'm closer to home now, which makes it good as well. Yeah, the <laughs> flight's a lot shorter, yeah. <laughs> but I, I think there's this perception around the league and around the country mm -hmm. that. Atlanta United's a destination yeah. where guys really want to play mm -hmm. because they, they put a lot of resources mm -hmm. into the facilities, mm -hmm. into everything, really, into the full program. Mm -hmm. Is it accurate to say that Atlanta United is mm -hmm. kind of maybe an aspirational mm -hmm. side where a lot of guys in this league would like to play here? Yeah, I would say, I would say so, definitely. Uh, I would say it's an aspiration for players, you know, but maybe for other clubs as well, trying to emulate what they've done here with the facilities and the stadium and just uh, 
how professional everything is, you know. But uh, like I said, the uh, owner has done a great job here, and I'm sure other teams are looking to, looking at Atlanta and seeing what they can do as well. Now that we're getting close to the World Cup, is it starting to hit you that the U.S. is not going to be part of it? Uh, I wouldn't say so. Probably when I see it on TV, you know, when you start seeing the opening ceremony and you start watching the games and things like that, then it'll hit you, you know. But uh, obviously we're all disappointed, but I don't know. I think every disappointment is an opportunity to learn from something, so hopefully we can learn from it. Yeah, what is that feeling like now, you know, that you've had a little bit of time mm -hmm. since qualifying's ended, you know, how do you feel about the whole qualifying process mm -hmm. now? Uh, it was difficult. I mean, uh, we didn't start off the greatest, you know, so we're always kind of fighting that battle to try to make up for, for a bad start. But I think we had, we, had, we had chances and opportunities to, we held it in our own hands, you know, it was just unfortunate we went to the Trinidad, you know, and lost that game. But like I said, hopefully we learn from it and the guys that are there uh, later on qualifying for the next World Cup learn from that as well. The good thing is you'll still be playing matches over that mm -hmm. period. It will just be MLS matches now mm -hmm. at the World Cup. Tell me about your story a little mm -hmm. bit, because I know you came to this country at a very, very young age, mm -hmm. and I'm not even sure if you have conscious memories of, mm -hmm. of what that all was like getting mm -hmm. over here. But talk about your story a little bit. Mm -hmm. What brought you to the United States? Yeah, I was born in Liberia, and then I uh, lived in uh, Europe when my dad was playing. So I uh, moved over to uh, Cleveland, Ohio when I was about 10 years old. Just my mom wanted us to go, to go to school, get education, go to college, and do everything like that. So... Uh, uh, we got the opportunity to do that, and we moved to uh, Cleveland, Ohio. My mom's uh, half-brother was living there at the time, so that's why Cleveland was the destination. There are a lot of different paths mm -hmm. to professional soccer. Yeah. You chose the collegiate path, mm -hmm. played at Akron. How do you think playing collegiate soccer mm -hmm. helped you get to where you are right now as a soccer player? I would say it helped a lot. You know, obviously you have the academy now, which is helping the guys uh, get into the professional ranks, which, uh, you know, we have guys here, talented players as well. But uh, I would say for me personally, it helped me grow as a uh, as a person, and I would say as a player as well, I think uh, you know, at that age you need to just figure life out as much as you can. And I think uh, going, to, going to the University of Akron and going to college helped me with that. Are you, sorry to interrupt. Are you an advocate mm -hmm. of maybe young soccer players going mm -hmm. through the collegiate route, doing it that way, mm -hmm. or, or has the academy really become a viable mm -hmm. option to do so as well? Uh, I would say it's just different uh, based on each player, you know, and, then, and how they are as a person. For some guys there, they're mentally tough enough to just uh, step into that situation and be in the professional environment and, and handle that and, uh, and learn that way, whereas some guys maybe, no matter the talent, you know, maybe just need, just need to go to college, maybe grow up a little bit as a person and figure yourself out before you make that jump. But I just think it's different for every person. You mentioned something uh, earlier this preseason that really struck me about how Tata Martinez have you, has you training at the 6, the 8, the 10, mm -hmm. really all over the midfield. And, and you've always been a player that's very versatile. Mm -hmm. you know, how is that helping you fit into Atlanta United, a new team, where you can mm -hmm. kind of play all those roles? Yeah, I think it's been good. I think it's been good just because uh, I get to go in different positions and you know, build more chemistry with guys in that position so uh, you can make adjustment during games or whatever situation is. And I think as a player, it just allows you to – be on the field a little bit more. Is there a position that you feel more comfortable in, or do you like moving around? Uh, it's tough. I always get asked that, obviously, because I play multiple positions, yeah. you know. But you know, sometimes in the wings or sometimes in the ten, I think for, the biggest thing for me is wherever I can get the most touches, and that varies from game to game. But most of the time, it's kind of essentially. And that's something that, that I've noticed straight mm -hmm. away with you is your technique is so strong. Mm -hmm. You can play fast. Mm -hmm. Is this team, you know, playing faster than your, your teams in Portland? Uh. I would say it's about, it's about similar. I would say it's about similar, but I would say maybe we have more, more team speed here, right. in my opinion. But I would say uh, uh, ball circulation and movement of the ball is, has been the same. Mm. DC United. Mm -hmm. Okay, they drew with Orlando City. Mm -hmm. uh, they were playing 11 on 10 and conceded late in that match. Otherwise, mm -hmm. they could have gotten three points on the road. Mm -hmm. Emil Assad mm -hmm. plays for DC United. Now, I know you weren't a teammate of his last mm -hmm. year here in Atlanta. But as you look at DC United, what are your perceptions mm -hmm. of that side? A, a team that really had some problems last mm -hmm. year, but yet had a lot of success against Atlanta United. Yeah, I would say they're a team that's uh, that's organized. You know, I say they're organized. It's tough to break down at times. So, and they've got pace, uh, pace on the wing. So, and up top now. But uh, I would say they're an organized team. You know, I think that game's going to be up to us. Like I say, eliminating our in little little mistakes that we made that cost us, and then the uh, folks on the how we can defend them on the counter. How are you feeling about mm -hmm. the opportunity to mm -hmm. play in front of mm -hmm. at least seventy thousand yeah. fans at home on Sunday? Uh, it's going to be special. I'm looking forward to it. You know, I witnessed it a couple times on TV last year, but I'm looking forward to it, and I'm glad I'm on the other side of it now. It's got to be good for the league in general. Mm -hmm. And I ask you as someone who's a relative newcomer mm -hmm. to Atlanta, but it's got to be good for the league mm -hmm. that there's a side here in Atlanta where they're routinely drawing 50,000, 60,000, mm -hmm. 70,000 for home matches. It really kind of proves that, mm -hmm. that soccer is growing and viable here in the southeast, doesn't it? Yeah, definitely. Uh, 
I think it's, I didn't, I didn't know soccer was that big in Atlanta until obviously Atlanta United came into the league and then you saw the fans and the turnout and the support from the community. But it's definitely been, it's been a, a great surprise, not just for me, you know, but I'm sure for everyone around the country. What kind of support have you gotten personally? I mm -hmm. mean, has it gotten to the point now where people recognize you if you're mm -hmm. at the grocery store or out mm -hmm. at a restaurant or something like that? Uh, I haven't been, we've been gone a lot with preseason yeah. and things like that. And so I haven't been about, able to go out and check out a bunch of new things, but it's just been like home shopping and things like that. But I haven't been out about the city too much yet. Give it time. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's coming. Uh, are you looking forward to this stretch where you have a bunch of home games in a row to kind of feel like you're part of Atlanta now? Yeah, definitely. Uh, those home games are going to be special, you know, and seeing the support from the fans, you know, and your family gets to come and watch the games and things like that. So I'm looking forward to it. I get to be home a little bit more. How's the family getting settled in Atlanta? It's good. It's good. Uh, our moms have been uh, here helping us a lot, uh, getting adjusted and things like that. But the club has been great as well, making sure that we're situated. So I know you haven't been here too long mm -hmm. and you've been out of town, but mm -hmm. we have to ask. Yeah. Favorite restaurant in Atlanta? Do you have one yet? Uh, I don't know if I have one yet. I had, uh, I had some Jamaican food the other day. It was pretty good. Jamaican food? Yeah. Well, I need to know where that is. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> <That's an acre. laughs> well, yeah, my wife found it. She ordered it. It got delivered. But uh, okay. yeah, it, was pretty, it was good. I'll start it Googling. Do you have like a favorite <laughs> coffee shop or a place to hang out or anything like that? Uh, no, so far I haven't been able to do much. Because we've got the two little ones as well. Right. So. right. Uh, what are they into? Like, uh, yeah. uh, Well, how old are they, yeah, first yeah, of all? Four and two. Four and two. So yeah. they're a little young to yeah. want to go get coffee with that, yeah, I'm sure. Exactly. But uh, are they in school here yet? Or are mm -hmm. they kind of getting settled into all of that? Uh, not in school yet, but they're getting uh, hopefully uh, next next uh, school term they can start school. My little girl, she's four. So, uh, yeah, looking for homes and things like that. And that's been great. Get to see the area a little bit. Do you feel like you want to put roots down here in mm -hmm. Atlanta? I mean, no matter where your professional yeah. career and mm -hmm. your, your international career takes mm -hmm. you, does Atlanta seem at this early juncture to be a place where you'd yeah. like to put some roots down? Yeah, I would say so. Definitely uh, the vibe that I got from the city. It's a real diverse city. Everyone's been friendly and things like that. So uh, I think for my wife and I, it's been a great place so far. How has this team maybe been a little different than your experiences in Portland? Mm, I would say maybe we we'll take a little bit more risk here, you know, but at the same time, it's risk versus uh, rewards. So the risks that we take, you know, uh, can end up being big rewards if we execute them properly. Who are some of the players when you were coming up that, that really shaped the way you play now? Mm -hmm. uh, one guy, I mean, I would say uh, Andres Iniesta, Barcelona. I think he's one guy that I love, and I, if I could be one player would be him or play like one player if you have a message for the fans yeah the 17s out there heading mm -hmm. into this match on sunday against mm -hmm. dc united go ahead and look at the camera and mm -hmm. uh, deliver your message yeah. if you'd like uh we're excited to be back home and play uh play in front of you guys and thank you for your support and uh we're ready to get to it and i think i speak for everyone out there we're very glad you're here you're going to make thank this you. club a lot better Thank so you. Darlington Nagby of Atlanta United, Mike Conti with Jason Longshore, and stay with us throughout the year. We'll have many more of these conversations on Sports Radio 92.9 The Game.